This is the book of Nahum, chapter 3, verses 1 and verse 5. Verse 1, and it reads, Woe to the bloody city! It is all full of lies and robbery. The prey departeth not. Verse 5, Behold, I am against thee, saith Yahweh of hosts, and I will discover thy skirts upon thy face, and I will show the nations thy nakedness and the kingdoms thy shame. All praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash, double honor to the apostles and elders of great millstone who rule well and teaching us this 100% truth. Salutations to them and my fellow Akim who labor in this truth week in and week out on the highways and byways. Also, salutations to the hopeful elect of the scattered 12 tribes of Israel, scattered to the four corners of the earth that be like it to the speckled bird, also known as your Israelite foreigners and your so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. To you, I say Shalom. This is your brother Ayasha Barazal coming back at you with another lesson that's uh, edifying to the uh, elect of the nation of Israel. All right. Uh, what I'm going to get into in this next uh, video clip is uh, <laughs> show the uh, number of uh, communities that were uh, destroyed by um, uh, Esau Edom uh, with water, you know, covered up thinking that they would never be exposed. And uh, the time has come that, you know, uh, this truth is coming out, springing forth out of the earth. All right. So without further ado, I'll get right to the video. Over the past couple years, more Americans have become familiar with the story of the Tulsa race massacre, where a white mob burned a vibrant black community to the ground, which is crazy. Even crazier? Dozens of other black towns have been erased off the American map, not by burning them down, but by hiding them underwater. Don't know what I mean? Well, let's find out in a segment called, How Did We Get Here? This is Lake Lanier. It's a lake in Forsyth County, Georgia, where people go swimming and boating and fishing and do a bunch of other lakey things. But before it was Lake Lanier, it was a town called Oscarville, Georgia. Now, Oscarville was a thriving, predominantly black community with a church, a school, and dozens of homes until the year 1912 when a very bad thing happened. Oh, two very bad things. In 1912, two black teenagers were accused of rape. They were tried, convicted, and sentenced to death in a single day. And after they were executed, a mob of white men terrorized, drove out, or killed all the black people in the surrounding area. And they did that until the entire black community of Oscarville disappeared. The county went from having over 1,000 black residents in 1912 to zero in 1920. That story is so sad, it makes this story look like a comedy. After the black community had been run off, the white people of Forsyth County said, you know what we could use? A big old lake. So they made one, right where the town of Oscarville had just been. They flooded the area and literally covered up the entire town with water. This is what it looks like right now. But the town is still under there. The homes and churches and schools, they're still down there. And now people go boating on top of them. Compared to that, this is truly a rom-com. Now, you might be thinking, what a weird isolated incident. But just like the rat who ate the pizza in the subway, this story is both crazy and common. Ever heard of Collegia, Alabama? It was once a thriving black community with a black college, the first black railroad, and literally hundreds of family homes. Today, it's Lake Martin. At least they had the decency to name it after a black person. And if you think this kind of thing only happened in the South, let me introduce you to a place called Central Park. It's named after that coffee shop on Friends. Central Park used to have a black community in it called York Hill. But the city of New York destroyed York Hill so that they could build the Central Park Reservoir. Because if there's one thing New York needs, it's another place for ducks to hang out. But if you come here, don't try and feed those ducks. They are very aggressive. Mess around and lose a finger. Now, when the residents of York Hill were kicked out of their homes, they fled to another black community nearby called Seneca Village. And then a few years later, New York destroyed Seneca Village, too, so that they could build Central Park on top of it. The craziest part of this story is that I work a few blocks away from a place where the government disappeared two black communities. And 
Until recently, I didn't know about any of it. You know why? Because it worked. They tried to erase black communities and they came way too close. But now there are people doing the research. So we are finally learning about places like Henry and McKee Islands, which is now located under Lake Guntersville in Alabama. And Vanport, Oregon, which is now located under Delta Park. And all of these towns, which are currently literally underwater. Hey, wait, hold on. What was that last one? Old Never Sink. That's a real place. Well, if we've learned one thing today, it's never assume something is unsinkable. There are over 100 drowned American towns, and many were destroyed in the name of something called development-induced displacement. That's when people have to leave their homes so the government can develop things like dams or parks or lakes. This happens to both white and black people, but historically when it happens, black people and other people of color are undercompensated for their property or not compensated at all. The theory is that the short-term bad effects are worth the long-term benefits for the community. But it's not fair if the long-term gain is mostly for white people. Now, luckily, there's a solution. It's a very complicated system. It involves a series of, ah, who am I kidding? Cut some dang checks. That's it. If you're going to kick black people out of their homes, make sure they have the money to stay on their feet. Cut a dang check. And yes, you can pay their descendants too because generational wealth is one of the many things that is destroyed when you put black communities underwater. So cut a dang check. These drowned towns are part of the black American history they don't want to teach you. It's ugly and it's gross and we don't even know all of it. And the more we find out, the harder it is to love this place that would do those things to so many people. And if you're feeling this way, which I often do, you can try loving what this country could become instead. Our history may be full of pain, but our future has limitless possibilities. So look to the future while simultaneously being suspicious of every lake you see. This has been How Did We Get Here? All right. A um, lot of information. Uh, in that video about a lot of uh, our towns that uh, were submerged underwater and uh, also came uh, additionally with the expense of life and um, bloodshed. But uh, just a couple of things uh, regarding the content. Like I said, she gave some very good uh, history. However, uh, there will be no check cut. You know, we are under those curses. Uh, there will be no reparations, okay? Um, and as far as this, this country is concerned, uh, there's where she also lacks wisdom as well, too. This place is finished. Uh, when I say this place, Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America, okay? It, 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 it is finished. Um, uh, we're almost out of here. You know, this, like I said, this truth is coming forth. Uh, and uh, Esau can't hide anymore, all right? He thought he could, but he can't hide anymore. And, you know, the more information... That comes about comes out about his past. Um, no matter how he tries to block it or take it down, is is making him angry. He's very fearful. He knows that uh, that the, the clock is ticking on him, and it's ticking very fast. All right. This is uh, the book of Luke, chapter eight, and verse seventeen. And these are the words of Yahweh Shai. Red letter. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. All right. So, you know, they <laughs> uh, covered up whole towns and, you know, she named five and then she went on to give a whole list of them and, you know, did not think that this information, uh, uh, Esau did not think this information was going to come forth. All right. But it has. All right. And that's that, that's his mindset. You know, he, he believes that, you know, he can uh, get away with uh, anything he wants to and, and, and no one uh, will ever find out about it. All right. Uh, that's just the way he thinks. And we know that according to uh, Psalms 10 and 11. And it reads, 
He hath said in his heart, his heart meaning his mind, Yahweh hath forgotten. He hideth his face. He will never see it. I mean, that's <laughs> that that is, you know, literally um, how 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 this man thinks, you know, uh, just in the, in the scripture above uh, verse four. Um, he says, wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after Yahweh. Yahweh is not. In all his thoughts, so he doesn't think the Most High uh, uh, sees uh, his, his iniquities and what he's done. All right, that's simply not true, because the Lord says His eyes are ten thousand times brighter than the sun. Let me get that in the Book of Sirach, or Ecclesiasticus, chapter twenty-three, verse nineteen, and it reads. Such a man only feareth the eyes of men, and knoweth not that the eyes of the Lord are ten thousand times brighter than the sun, beholding all the ways of men and considering the most secret parts. So yeah, you know he'll never admit it, but you know he he fears he fears the prophets, you know, of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, revealing his his uh, his wickedness, you know, on a daily basis, continually around the clock. You know, you see that, you know, on the highways and byways and the video epistles that they go out, you know, every single day, like I said, around the clock, you know, uh, he, he fears that. And, uh, you know, which is why he, you know, likes to snatch down pages, has these algorithms, uh, um, um, searching our videos for keywords, you know, to take him down. Um, and, and he's in great fear because he's being exposed. All right. Well, like I said, you know. The eyes of the Lord are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. You know, even the things that the prophets have not seen or some of their own people have not seen. The Lord knows that he's done those things. All right. And how does he know that? This is the book of uh, Isaiah 46 and 10. Isaiah 46 and 10. And it reads, Declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. So, <laughs> you know, Esau, Edom did not think that the Lord saw this. You know, like like the scriptures say, he created peace, he creates evil. All right. He, that's that balance that the Lord has. You know, as, as Proverbs 11 and I think one says, you know, a false balance is an abomination to the Lord. You know, so when you hear that he's an all loving God, all good, all that, you know, one way, that's that's just simply not true. All right. But he said he declared the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Just as he allowed that that evil to, to happen to Jake, you know, the truth of it is coming out now. And he knew that that was coming. All right. And like I said, it will do all his pleasure. All right. This is uh, Psalms 85 and 11. And it reads, Truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. All right? And here it is, you know. You're seeing all of this, uh, this truth, and that's just this is just one aspect of what Esau, uh, Eden has done to the children of Israel. Okay? One aspect with the covering up of those uh, cities that they dwelled in, you know, covering up, drowning the people, and like I said, uh, killing them, all right? That's just one aspect of it, you know? It says the truth shall spring out of the earth, and that's where we are right now, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Like, like he said in that previous uh, precept, Isaiah 46, 10, shall do all his pleasure, all right? Is that not his pleasure? That righteousness looking down from heaven, he sees he sees what he has uh, called to come to pass, you know. Like he said, he declared the end from the beginning, all right? And he's looking down on it right now. And there's going to be recompense for that, Esau, Edom, you know. Uh, that the truth is coming out about you, you know, you, you, you think your, your spirit is bruised um, because the truth is coming out about you. No, that's, <laughs> you know, there's a lot more that's coming. This is uh, the book of uh, Habakkuk. Chapter 2, verse 12. And it reads, Woe to him that buildeth a town with blood and establish a city by iniquity. All right? And, and that's the thing. That word woe means destruction. So 
So it's destruction coming to you, Esau, you know, all right, for what you did, that built the town with blood and established the city by iniquity. That's exactly what you did, you know. You uh, went through those communities, um, uh, uh, killing Jake, most likely for false allegations, you know, to have someone uh, arrested, tried, convicted, and, you know, sentenced in one day, you know, <laughs> that that's your track record, you know. That is your track record to get Jake as fast as you can, take him out as fast as you can. And, and you built, you know, over these uh, cities, establishing your own city through sin, all right? And, and like the scriptures say, destruction is going to come to you for that, all right? And I'll close out here, uh, one of my favorite scriptures. This is uh, the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 25. And it reads, But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he have done, and there is no respect of persons. All right? So you got it coming to you. You know, whether you're rich, poor, young, or old, Esau, Edom, you got it coming to you. All right? The wrong that you've done, you're going to receive that wrong. All right? And we, and like uh, Revelation says, you know, you're going to receive double for what you did. You know, twice as long, twice as hard. You're going to receive it. You know, like it says, no respect of person. As, as the scriptures says, uh, say, the Lord deals with nations, not individuals. He said, he, you know, he will visit the iniquity of the father upon the third and fourth generation. All right? So, yeah, you're going to have to pay for, you don't have to pay for what you did. All right, and like I said, that's just one aspect, the covering up of those cities with water. All right, with that, I hope this lesson was edifying for the body. Once again, I'm going to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Akakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who were well in teaching us this 100% truth. Salutations to them and my fellow Akim who labor in this truth week in and week out on the highways and byways. Also, salutations to the hopeful elect of the scattered 12 tribes of Israel, scattered to the four corners of the earth, that be likened to the speckled bird, also known as your Israelite foreigners and your so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. To you, I say Shalom, Ababa Ball, Kwam Yasharala. We almost out of here. Shalom. <laughs>